let me jump in on, on the Obama speech first, because I actually think that that these speeches went together in, in an interesting way. And I think that a, President Obama doing what he did allowed Senator Harris to do what she did. And, and I think that kind of coordination is not often executed the way it's been executed this week. That's a good point. Let, yeah. let me say this about Obama. I have a hunch that every living former president would speak from the same deep well of despair. Mm -hmm. Obama's speech shook me because of his despair laid bare. And if you have been the president, you probably feel, you probably have a well of fury that started the first day of the transition when Donald Trump and his son tried to set up a back channel to Russia to go around the intelligence community. By the way, there are a bunch of stars at the CIA from members of the intelligence community that died protecting this country's national security. First thing that Trump did when he, beat, when he won was to liken them to Nazis. So we cannot fathom the fury and the despair and the rage that every former living president, I'm going to go out on a limb and say the dead ones too, <laughs> feel when they watch Donald Trump. And I've not seen... Any living president tap that well of despair and be vulnerable enough to share it with the country. But that is my theory of the case of what President Obama did tonight. And the gift it gave Senator Harris, the vice presidential campaign exists in three acts. The first is the announcement speech. The second is the convention speech. And the third is the vice presidential debate. By Obama doing what he did and being that vulnerable and sharing that urgent call to action. Um, and and I, I would guess he wrestled with whether or not to do that. Um, she was allowed to do, and I don't see, I see her attacks as really nice. I think the reason she slays Bill Barr is because she does it with this velvet hammer. So, so I, I didn't see her as sort of putting aside the fierceness to be nice. I think she is always all things. And I don't think that any woman should ever again have to, have to compartmentalize any part of herself. And, and I think the gift of, of her candidacy is that she doesn't. But I think that by Obama doing what he did at mm -hmm. 10 o'clock, at 1030, she could do what she did, yeah. which was tell her story. And I, I'm from the Bay Area, too. And I I've grown up knowing her and watching her and, and watching all the women around her. So to see all of them there, it just let her tell that part of her story. But I think that this convention storytelling is second to none. Amen. I actually think that the stories they have told have built this drama that is Hollywood-like in its tension, in its despair, in its pain. I mean, to make the pain that we have all felt, if you love this country, to watch what Donald Trump has done to it has been searing. It has been gutting. And to make that part of the case to the country is risky. And, you know, we won't know till Election Day if it works, but it is big and it is painful and it is raw. And and I just think that this Obama speech it was one for the ages and it, and, it, and it let everybody else kind of go out and do what they have to do to tell the Biden story. But I, I think it's something we'll be talking about for a really long time, Brian. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.